Hello class, my name is Mbourangon Algis and I am your teacher of English. Okay, today we're going to see a lesson about question tags. Donc je disais que je m'appelle Mbourangon Algis et je suis votre professeur d'anglais. Aujourd'hui, nous allons suivre la leçon sur les question tags. What do we mean by question tags? Question tags are those questions we put orally when speaking to others, when you are talking to your friend, and you want him to witness, to be your witness, to give confirmation. At the time you use question tags. This is what it means. Question tags are used orally when you speak to ask for confirmation from our interlocutor that we take as a witness. Okay? And I said they depend on the form of the sentence. Okay, that's to say, if the sentence is in affirmative form, it's different, and if it is in negative form, the question tag is also different. And that, then we're going to start with question tags in affirmative form. What do we do when the sentence that we are asked to, you, uh, to put the question tag to is in affirmative form. When the sentence is in affirmative form, the question tag must be in interrogative form. What do I mean by interrogative form? That is, you have your sentence in affirmative, uh, affirmative sorry, form. You need to have your auxiliary. The auxiliary, and after the auxiliary, you add this NT, after which you add the personal pronoun. Donc, je disais que les question tags sont des questions qu'on pose oralement pour demander confirmation auprès d'un ami à qui on parle, pour lui dire ce que nous disons souvent en français, n'est-ce pas Par exemple, tu dis à quelqu'un, vous êtes congolais. Et donc, pour demander confirmation, vous dites, n'est-ce pas En anglais, we use question tags uh, differently, as, as I said, when it is with the auxiliary to be, there it is different. When it is with an ordinary verb, it is different as well, and so on. So we're going to start with the verb to be. What do we do? The sentence is in affirmative form, as we have got it here. You are a Congolese. Vous êtes Congolais. How to say n'est-ce pas? So you have to come back to the sentence. Tu reviens à la phrase et tu cherches l'auxiliaire. Where is the auxiliary in this sentence? The auxiliary here is are, which is the verb to be. And as I said here, the verb to be is an auxiliary. So it doesn't need another auxiliary. So for the sentence, John is fond of cats. John aime les chats. Il aime beaucoup les chats. Comment dire n'est-ce pas? So you have John is fond of cats. Since is is the verb to be, so I put my is here. You have is, depending on the subject. John is the third person singular. At the time, I use the suitable pro personal pronoun. If John is, uh, I mean, if the, it is a, a subject that's in plural, for example, you have Peter and, and John. At the time, you have two people. You have to do your best. Tu dois faire de ton mieux pour trouver le pronom personnel qui correspond à ce sujet-là. Since we have two people, at the time, the subject is they. Ils, puisqu'ils sont deux. But since here we have just one, at the time it is the third person singular, you say, John is fond of cats. John aime beaucoup les chats. Alors, how to say n'est-ce pas? You say is because you have replaced John by he, the per a personal pronoun for man, and you add this. Isn't he? N'est-ce pas? John is fond of cats. N'est-ce pas? Isn't he? When we come down, you have they are doing their best. They are doing their best. Ils font de leur mieux. 
The first aspect you have to, to keep in mind is to look for the subject. What is the subject in this sentence? It is they. Automatically, you take your they there and you put it here with the question mark, question, question mark, and you come back to the sentence. Always coming back to the sentence and look for the auxiliary. In this case, in our case, the, uh, the auxiliary is here, which is the verb to be. They are doing their best. Okay, the question tag is you take your subject, as I said, and you try to conjugate the verb to be, sorry, the verb to be in the present simple sense. The tense here is the present simple. You conjugate the verb to be in the present simple and depending on the subject here. Since it is they, we're going to say they are. And since the sentence is in affirmative form, so you have to add and at the time you say they are doing their best. Aren't they? They are doing their best. Aren't they? The next one is Theresa May was the Prime Minister of England. Theresa May was the Prime Minister. Theresa May était la Première Ministre. Alors, Theresa May était la Première Ministre. N'est-ce pas? How to say n'est-ce pas? You have to come back here. Who is Theresa May? Is it, is it a man or a woman? Since we know she, she is a woman, we do our best to find the personal pronoun for Theresa May. And we have she, since she's a woman. And you come back to the verb, the, the sentence, to look for the auxiliary, which in our case is was. Was is always the verb to be. But what tense is it conjugated in? As we can see it, it is conjugated in the past simple. At that time, you conjugate the verb to be depending on or taking into account the subject which is she. At the time you say she, and you have your auxiliary ear, she was, and you look at the sentence. Since it is in affirmative form, you add nt. Donc, je disais, pour dire n'est-ce pas en anglais, euh, il faut tenir compte, premièrement, de la forme de la phrase. À quelle forme est-elle Alors, une fois que tu as trouvé la forme, dans le cas d'espèce, c'est la forme affirmative, il faut maintenant trouver le sujet. Quel est le sujet dans cette phrase Le sujet ici, c'est John. Comme c'est John, alors il faut trouver le pronom personnel qui correspond à John. Le même cas avec Theresa May. Trouver le, le pronom personnel qui correspond, comme pour le cas de John, c'est un homme, le pronom personnel qui correspond, c'est « i ». Et tu reviens à la phrase, tu demandes à voir où est l'auxiliaire. L'auxiliaire étant « to be », donc « is ». Tu dois t'arranger à conjuguer cet auxiliaire qui est là « to be » par rapport au pronom personnel que tu as trouvé ici et par rapport au temps auquel il était conjugué dans la phrase initiale. That's for the verb to be. Okay? Now we move to question tags with ordinary verbs. Question tags with ordinary verbs. And we said, when ordinary verbs are conjugated in the present simple, the auxiliary is either do or does. This is to say, if the subject if the subject is she, the auxiliary is going to be does. Si le sujet c'est she, au présent simple, l'auxiliaire ce sera does. If uh, the subject is we, for example, the auxiliary is going to be do. Okay? And if the auxiliary verb is conjugated in the past simple, the auxiliary is did. So you have to keep this structure in your mind. The question tag starts with an auxiliary. Uh, since the sentence is in affirmative form, after the auxiliary, 
you need to put this anti, okay, and you look for the personal pronoun. And you have to keep in mind that when put uh, using question tags with affirmative uh, statements, the question tag must be in interrogative contracted. Okay, contracted. So for the sentence here, for this sentence, she visits London twice a year. She visits London twice a year. Elle visite Londres deux fois par année. Elle visite Londres deux fois par année. Alors, l'auxiliaire, c'est does, puisque le sujet, c'est she, the subject being she. The auxiliary is going to be does, okay? And you have to put this small anti. You have to put it. But if you do this, if you don't put it in contractive form, for example, you do, you write this, does, and you say it not, this is wrong. This is wrong. You have to put the question tag in interrogative form, yes, but contracted. You have to contract. So we have, she visits, she visits London twice a year. Elle visite Londres deux fois par année. This, the auxiliary is does, as I said, because we have, sorry, we have, she has the subject. Since the verb here, what is the tense in which it is conjugated? The verb is conjugated in the present simple. Since it is conjugated in the present simple, the auxiliary is automatically does because our subject is she. So you put your does here. Let me drop it first. You use your does because you have she here use does, does, and you look for the contracted anti. Doesn't, you have compulsory to put does, uh, this element, doesn't, and you look for the subject with the question mark, compulsory, question mark. Next sentence is, Mandela spent 27 years in jail. Mandela spent 27 years in jail. Mandela a passé 27 ans en prison. How to say, n'est-ce pas? Okay. You have to come back to first. Mandela, who is he? Is it an animal, an object, a man or a woman? So, after you have discovered the nature or the gender of this subject, since we know Mandela was a man, you use the corresponding or the suitable personal pronoun for Mandela here with the question mark. And you come back to the verb of the sentence here, spent. What tense is it conjugated in? The verb to spend here is conjugated in the past simple. Since it is conjugated in the past simple, we have to use did. As we said here, when the ordinary verb is in the past, the auxiliary is did. Okay? You use did. And since the sentence is in affirmative form, don't forget to add this element. N, T. Didn't he? Mandela spent 27 years in jail. Didn't he? Mandela a passé 27 ans en prison, n'est-ce pas? The last sentence for ordinary verbs is Cats eat mice. Cats eat mice. Les chats mangent des souris. Les chats mangent des souris. N'est-ce pas? How to say n'est-ce pas? Always doing the same thing. You come back to the subject. What is Cat. What do you mean by cats? Cats are animals. Okay? Since they are in plural, the subject must be they. Because there are many cats here. 
We have S, so there are many cats. The subject is they. And you come back to the verb, the verb to eat. Cats eat mice. What tense is the verb to eat conjugated in? It is conjugated in the present simple. Whenever you discover the tense of the sentence, you have to look for the auxiliary. And you, you put this question to yourself. Is the auxiliary going to be do or does? And the answer is going to be found thanks to the subject you have here. If the subject is she, it, or he, the auxiliary is does. Is, does. If uh, the subject is you, we, they, or I, the auxiliary is do. Okay? Uh, next. John is fond of... Okay. For this sentence, as I said, cats eat mice. Our subject is going to be they because cats are numerous. They are in plural. It's they. And the auxiliary is going to be do because the subject is they. We use our do here. And since the sentence is in affirmative form, we add NT. Don't they? Cats eat mice. Don't they? Okay. Now, there is something we have to correct here. It's the same sentence. We don't need to use uh, full stops. We use commas and we write in... Yes, we don't write in capital letters. We say don't and you correct everywhere. You come here. Mandela spent 27 years in jail. Did, didn't he? You come here, the same thing. She visits London twice a year. Doesn't she? You go up. Okay, it's the same sentence, so don't, no need to, to put full stop. You put a comma and no capital letters. The same thing here. You have John is fond of cats. You see? Isn't he? Okay, let's keep on. We move to the auxiliary, the verb to have, which is sometime troublesome. And I said, the verb to have is an auxiliary only in perfect tenses. That's the present perfect, the past perfect. And, but when it is in simple tenses, such as the present simple and the past simple, it becomes an ordinary verb. What do I mean? When we have this sentence, my uncle has locked his door. Mon oncle a fermé sa porte à clé, il a bloqué sa porte. Comment dire, n'est-ce pas? We have locked and we have has. It's has because my uncle is the third person singular. My uncle has locked his door. Where is the auxiliary? The auxiliary is has because we have a past participle here. At the time, you take as, you put it here, and my uncle is a man. The, the suitable personal pronoun for a man is he. We have the auxiliary, we have the subject and the question mark, and you have always to keep in mind that the form of the sentence is necessary, is indispensable. So you have, my uncle has locked his door, as and, as and, he, because the sentence is in affirmative form. Okay? As I said, we don't need to use full stops. We use a comma and no capital letters. Okay? It's the same here. No full stop. But a comma, 
The sentence is, we had met before. We had met before. Nous nous sommes rencontrés avant. We have met before. How to say, n'est-ce pas? L'avantage en français, c'est qu'on dit n'est-ce pas partout. But in English, it depends upon the tense of the verb. We had met before. What tense is it here? This is the past, because you have the verb to have in past simple. Perfect, because you have the past participle of the verb to meet. So, we had met before is the past perfect. This is the past perfect tense. And the subject, automatically, since it is a personal pronoun, you just take it here and question mark. You come back to the sentence. Where is the auxiliary? The auxiliary is had. This is the auxiliary. At the time, you put it here and you always add NT. Donc, on a toujours besoin de trouver l'auxiliaire auquel on ajoute N apostrophe T et le sujet qui correspond. Le sujet, on le trouve ici. Mais on n'ajoute pas NT n'importe comment. Il faut tenir compte de la forme de la phrase. Si la phrase est à la forme affirmative, à ce moment, on ajoute le NT. I said but, mais. But, Hélène has two sons. Hélène has two sons. The verb here is have. But what tense is it conjugated in? It is conjugated in the present simple. And as I said, when the verb to have is in the present simple, it's no, no longer an auxiliary, but it becomes an ordinary verb. And since it is an ordinary verb, we need the auxiliary do or, uh, I mean, does or do, depending on the subject. The subject here is Ellen. Ellen is a woman. Since it is a woman, so the personal pronoun is going to be she. Okay, she. And how to find the auxiliary? How to find the auxiliary? Whenever you discover that the sentence, or I mean the verb, is in the present simple, automatically in your head, you have either does or do as auxiliary. And you have to take into account the subject, since our subject here is she. So we're going to use does here, does, to which we add n T, doesn't she? Ellen has two sons. Doesn't she? Okay. Next, let's move to question tags with modal verbs. Question tags with modal verb. Now, we have many modal verbs. You know them, I guess. We have can, which means pouvoir. We have must which means devoir, we have may, which means pouvoir as well. We have could, we have will, should, and many others, you know. And I said, they are their own auxiliaries. They are their own auxiliaries. This is to say, they don't need other auxiliaries to be conjugated. No, they are autonomous. They don't need they are independent, I mean independent, yes. They don't need do, does, or did, or any else auxiliary, okay? Since they are independent, we come back to the structure here. The sentence here, Obama could win again. Obama could win again. It is in affirmative form. And as we said, when it is in affirmative form, we need to find the auxiliary plus NT, and the personal pronoun, the suitable personal pronoun. Obama could win again. What, who is Obama? Obama is a man. So, the personal pronoun is E. We take it here. We write E with the question mark. With the question mark. E. And we look for the auxiliary. Where is the auxiliary here? We have could. Could is a modal verb. And as we said, 
Modal verbs are auxiliaries. They donate other auxiliaries. So you say, Obama could win again. Obama pouvait encore gagner. Comment dire, n'est-ce pas? We need the subject, as we said, and we take the auxiliary could, which we add, to which we add, and T. So we say, Obama could win again. Couldn't he? Obama could win again. Couldn't he? We move to the second sentence. The second sentence. You must read your lessons to succeed. You must read your lessons to succeed. Vous devez lire vos leçons pour réussir. How to say, n'est-ce pas? Okay. Vous devez lire vos leçons pour réussir, n'est-ce pas? In English, you come back to the sentence and the first element you have. So, you have. The subject is you. Yes. The subject is you. You put your you in your Since it is a personal pronoun, no need to suffer for nothing. You have your, uh, your subject. After the subject, you come back to the sentence. Where is the auxiliary? The auxiliary is must. You must read your lessons. Must. Since the sentence is affirmative, you add... And T, you must read your lesson. Mustn't you? You must read your lesson. Mustn't you? As you uh, comme vous le dites, en français, en fontain, tu dois lire tes leçons pour réussir. No, the no in good French is n'est-ce pas? Okay? In English, for this sentence, we say, mustn't you? You must read your lessons. Mustn't you? Vous devez lire vos leçons. N'est-ce pas? Okay? The next sentence is, we can do it. We can do it. Nous pouvons le faire. We can do it. Nous pouvons le faire, n'est-ce pas? How to say, n'est-ce pas? The first element is always to do your best to find the subject. It's a year, so you have we. And the question mark. The question mark. We and the question mark. And you come back to the sentence. Where is the, the auxiliary? The auxiliary is can. This is the auxiliary. And you look for the form of the sentence. Since this sentence is in affirmative form, we find our auxiliary. And since can already has N, you don't need to add another N. Don't say this. No. Don't say can't. No. It has already got N, so you just add this and t can't we we can do it can't we we can add one sentence to demonstrate again you have she uh, let's say she she will come today she will come today. She will come today. Where is the auxiliary in this sentence? The auxiliary is will. Will is a modal verb, even though you know it as an aspect of the future, but will is also a modal verb. So, automatically you use will as your auxiliary, and you look for the form of the sentence. What form is the sentence in? The sentence is in affirmative form. So, uh, normally you should do this, will. And since it is in, negative fo uh, in affirmative form, you would do this normally. But, but, this is a trip, but you cannot say Willent. Sorry, you cannot say willent. No. Don't say willent. This is wrong. Okay? When you add, uh, when you contract will in negative form, this disappear and you say want, want, and you take your subject, want, she, Want she? She will come today. Want she? Okay. 
Now, let's move to another aspect of our lesson. We're going to see question tags. Question tags in or with negative negative statements. Question tags with negative statements. What do we do when the sentence to which we are asked to apply or to use the question tag is in negative form? When the sentence is in negative form, the question tag is very simple. Why is it very simple? Because you, are, you first have the auxiliary, which is now visible at any tense, and you just need two aspects, two elements when putting your question tag. You need the auxiliary and the subject. Okay? Let's write this. When the sentence is in negative form, is in negative form, come on, the question tag, the question tag is in Intero is in interrogative, interrogative form. Is in interrogative form. What do I mean by interrogative form? When the sentence is in negative form, the question tag, sorry, the question tag, no capital letter here, we are, we are in the middle of the sentence. The question tag is in interrogative form. What do we mean by interrogative form in the question tag? You just need the auxiliary and the and the uh, subject. Okay, you just need the auxiliary and the subject. When the sentence is in negative form, the question tag is sorry. Take off this s. The question tag is the question tag okay the question tag is in negative uh, interrogative form so you have this structure negative negative statement negative statement comma you need your auxiliary. You need your auxiliary plus the subject, which must be a personal pronoun. Plus the subject plus the question mark. Okay? This is your structure for question tags in with sentences in negative. Form. So as we did here, when the sentence is has got a verb such as uh, I am, I am not a Chinese. I am not a Chinese. I am not a Chinese. Je ne suis pas un Chinois. I am not a Chinese. How to say n'est-ce pas? Comment dire n'est-ce pas? You come back to the sentence. Your subject is clear. It is a personal pronoun. So you won't suffer. And where is the auxiliary? The auxiliary here is the verb to be. Since your subject is I, you come back to the sentence. You just take the auxiliary. And it is simple. Am I? I am not a Chinese. Am I? Okay? Now, take notes. Take notes. And we're going to continue. Take notes. 
You start by the title of the lesson. You take all the lesson and we're going to continue. Okay, so you take note here and I'm going to clean this part since we don't have much space. Okay, take notes and I'm going to clean this to continue. Good. We finished with this sentence and we move to the next one with an ordinary verb this time. You have, for example, uh, we, we do not, we do not drink beer. We do not drink beer. We do not drink beer. Okay, you put a comma, not a full stop. We do not drink beer. Nous ne buvons pas de bière. How to say n'est-ce pas? You come back to the sentence. You have your subject. This is very easy. You put your subject here with the question mark. We do not drink beer. And when it is in negative form, as I said, the auxiliary is visible. And our auxiliary here is do. So we say, do we? We do not drink beer, do we? Okay. If we take another sentence in the past this time, she, she did not go home. She did, did not go home. She did not go home. Elle n'est pas allée à la maison. She did not go home. What is, according to you, the auxiliary in this sentence? I guess you'll find the answer. The auxiliary is did. This is the auxiliary here, did. And the subject is clear, she. You say, did she. She did not go home, did she. Elle n'est pas allée à la maison, n'est-ce pas? Okay. So, when it is in negative form, you just apply the rule that after a negative sentence, you need to use the auxiliary, which is in the sentence and which is visible, plus the subject. That's what we call interro-negative form. Donc, on a besoin que de l'auxiliaire et du sujet. Le sujet, ça doit être un pronom personnel, si c'est le nom d'une personne, d'un animal ou de je ne sais quoi d'autre, vous vous arrangez à trouver le pronom personnel qui correspond à ce nom-là ou à ces noms-là. Now, let's move to question tags with imperatives. Question tags with imperatives. Question tags Question tags with imperatives. Imperatives. Question tags with imperatives. The question tag avec des phrases qui sont à l'impératif. With imperatives. Question tags with imperatives. Okay. Now, in English, unlike French, where you have free personal, uh, pro personal, personal pronouns, sorry, in English, we've just got two. But in French, they are free. You have you and we. An imperative is either addressed to you or to all of us, okay? And how to know that this imperative, this order, this suggestion is addressed to you or to me, or to us, all of us, I mean. We have this one, uh, question tags, 
question tags with you with you in imperative of course with you an imperative an imperative is addressed to you an imperative is addressed to you when when uh, we have when we have a verb without without to at the beginning at the beginning at the beginning of a sentence at the beginning of a sentence what is this this is to say lorsque vous avez une phrase qui commence par un verbe directement sans sujet OK le verbe n'a pas de sujet c'est l'impératif comment savoir que ça s'adresse à you alors le verbe commence la phrase you have example here example here the example is go out go go out the example is go out i say so go out i say so go out so ou alors sorti how to put the question tag when the imperative is addressed to you so you have the verb here le verbe commence la phrase il n'y a pas de sujet donc c'est un impératif qui s'adresse à toi ou à vous you have go out the question tag is will you go out will you ici on ne parle pas d'affirmatif ou de négatif ce qui compte c'est que ce soit l'impératif we can take the second sentence don't don't make noise don't make noise ne faites pas de bruit don't make noise okay you have an imperative which is addressed to you always use will will you okay so when it is an order that's addressed to you you use will you will you okay donc lorsque l'ordre s'adresse à toi on te dit par exemple lève-toi dors chante sing dance jump and so on c'est un ordre qui s'adresse à toi so the question tag is will you will you peu importe la forme de cette phrase ici c'est un impératif qui est négatif oui mais la question tag reste la même let's move to the second one question tags question tags with question tags with we oui. question tags with we oui. when the question tag when the question tag is addressed to we lorsque l'ordre s'adresse à nous donc le sujet qui est bien sûr caché c'est nous à l'impératif je dis par exemple levez-vous what is the structure for the question tag here comment we recognize on reconnaît donc we recognize that the subject 
the subject is oui thanks to on reconnaît que le sujet c'est oui grâce à thanks to this expression let us that can also be shortened by, a, by saying this let's when you have this at the time the order is addressed to we lorsque vous avez let us ou let's qui est sa forme contractée ça veut dire que l'ordre s'adresse à nous alors comment dit Comment mettre, euh, poser une question tag Qui ici ne veut plus dire, n'est-ce pas Mais tu dis à quelqu'un, lève-toi, d'accord Tu veux bien Lève-toi, ok The sentence, uh, the tag. I mean, the tag question. The question tag. Oh, let's write here. The question tag. The question tag. Is then, is then, la question tag, la question de confirmation, is then, colon, shall, shall we, shall we, ok, it's shall we, Lorsque l'ordre s'adresse à nous, a question tag is shall we. Tu dis par exemple, tu dis aux autres, allons au cinéma ce soir. Comment on dit Vous voulez bien Ok, d'accord. In English, you have this example, for example. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the cinema. Let's go to the cinema. Allons au cinéma. Let's go to... Sorry, to the cinema. Allons au cinéma. OK? Allons au cinéma. OK. Oh, d'accord. Tu sais... Shall we? Allons au cinéma. D'accord? Shall we? It can also be used in negative form. You say... Let's not... Let's not. Uh, let's not make noise. Let's not make noise. Let's just say, shall we? Ne faisons pas de bruit, ne bavardons pas. Ok, d'accord. This is when the sentence to which you are asked to apply. The question tag is an imperative one. Okay? And I guess you have finished here. We're going to continue the lesson. We're going to finish. There, is, there are some remarks that you need to copy to understand and to keep in your mind. We have some remarks. We have some remarks. Note. Note. The first remark is this one. Let's structure it like this. The first remark is when you have this, when you have Never. Hardly, when you have never, hardly, jamais, à peine, difficilement, hardly, you have scarcely, you have nobody, nobody, No one 
in a sentence in a sentence consider in a sentence consider that it is that it is consider that it is in negative form negative form this is the first remark lorsque vous avez dans votre phrase la phrase à laquelle on vous demande d'appliquer les question tag vous l'avez dans donc euh, vous avez ces adverbes restrictifs dans votre phrase never qui veut dire jamais hardly and scarcely the same à peine nobody or nobody no one personne vous avez ces adverbes restrictifs là ou ces pronoms indéfinis pour le cas de ceci dans votre phrase on vous demande de mettre euh, de poser une question tag à cette phrase consider this sentence that sentence in negative form considérez que cette phrase là est à la forme négative alors vous n'aurez besoin dans votre question tag que de l'auxiliaire et du sujet you are for example she never she never comes late she never comes late elle ne vient jamais en retard she never comes late alors when you see this sentence when you look at this sentence since the neg negative form normally needs does do did plus not when you look at this sentence you can be uh, tempted to consider it as affirmative no this is negative because you have never on la considère donc comme étant négative c'est à other time you look for the auxiliary in this sentence here the auxiliary is hidden l'auxiliaire est caché on ne le voit pas à l'œil nu mais si vous portez des lunettes grammaticales vous le verrez comment le voir you come back to the verb What tense is this, this verb conjugated in? The verb to come here is conjugated in the present simple. Since it is the present simple, automatically we know that our auxiliaries are either does or do. How to know that it is does or do? You look for the subject. The subject here is she, so it's going to be does and we take our subject does she okay does she and the same case for all the rest here the second remark the second remark is this one the second remark is this one oh sorry no need to use capital letters here the second remark is this one when you have when you have when you have when you have uh, mm, no one for example everyone Uh, some somebody everybody 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 when you have let's say when you have a subject which is Uh, which ends in one that's no one someone everyone somebody uh, you have uh, people okay you have people you have people as the subject 
as the subject of your sentences of your sentences lorsque vous avez des mots qui se terminent par one et si j'en ai cité quelques-uns qui se terminent par one par body donc comme everyone everybody no one anybody and the word people as your subject comme sujet de vos phrases les phrases auxquelles on vous demande d'appliquer les question tag you replace replace those words vous remplacez ces mots là you replace those words by they ils deviennent they bien que euh, et on en parle souvent au singulier mais au question tag ils sont utilisés au pluriel so when you have no one nobody people as the subject of your sentences comma replace replace them by by they in the question tag in the question tag example example let's take this one people do not people do not let's say people do not admit people do not admit their mistakes people do not admit their mistakes easily comment people do not admit their mistakes easily okay people do not admit their mistakes easily les gens ne reconnaissent pas leurs erreurs facilement people do not admit their mistakes easily people do not admit their mistakes easily les gens ne reconnaissent pas leurs erreurs facilement n'est-ce pas how to say n'est-ce pas the problem here is where is the subject our subject is people and if you read here we said all words okay ending by one like uh, no one everyone somebody everyone people are replaced by they in question tags so our auxiliary being visible you just say do and people becomes do they if we take another sentence we can say ah uh, this is the sentence i like nobody nobody is perfect nobody is perfect personne n'est parfait nobody is perfect where is the subject where is the subject the subject is nobody nobody personne and at the time we replace nobody by they and where is the auxiliary the auxiliary is l'auxiliaire c'est is mais comme nobody est remplacé par they on ne peut plus dire is we cannot say is we're going to say ah but there is a problem if you consider the first remark we said that if you have nobody no one in a sentence you consider that sentence in negative form on a dit au niveau de la première remarque que si vous avez dans votre phrase des mots comme no one nobody okay cette phrase là est négative et au niveau de la deuxième deuxième remarque nous avons dit que si vous avez des mots qui se terminent par body, one and people, alors on doit les remplacer par they, ce que nous avons déjà fait. Sachant que nous avons nobody dans cette phrase, ça veut dire que cette phrase là est négative. Est négative. So, we just say, on va simplement dire 
un anneau troxylaire, alors j'ai trop éloigné le, su le sujet, comme elle est négative, on n'aura plus besoin de, de dire « aren't they ». Ne pas vous tromper parce que cette phrase-là est déjà négative. So we just say « are they ». Personne n'est parfait, n'est-ce pas ?« Nobody is perfect ». Are they? The third remark is going to be this one. Let's just say this and oh, this and this and that become it. But, but there remains unchanged. Remains unchanged. If you have this or that as your subject, you change them as you've changed. Comme tu as changé nobody, this et that aussi change lorsque tu uh, poses une question tag à cette phrase-là. Et donc, ils deviennent « it ». But, « there does not change ». Reste comme il est, il ne change pas. Example, « this is » Oh, let's say « this car »« this car »« oh, this car »« is » Ours. This car is ours. Cette voiture est la nôtre. Comment dire, n'est-ce pas? You come back to the sentence, you have this. Automatically, you say, you use your subject here with the question mark. This car is ours. Cette voiture est la nôtre, n'est-ce pas? What's the form of this sentence? This sentence is in affirmative form. So, We say is. Since it is in affirmative form, we have to add the negation. Isn't it? This car is ours. Isn't it? There is something I wanted to show you. You have this sentence. I am your only chance. I am your only chance. I am your only chance. Je suis votre seule chance, votre seule possibilité de sortir du peu de train dans lequel vous êtes. I am your own only chance. Comme on dit, n'est-ce pas? Je suis votre seule chance. We have this sentence which is in affirmative form. Elle est à la forme affirmative. Et donc, selon ce que nous avons fait précédemment, nous devons avoir une question tag à la forme interro-négative. Et donc, est-ce que nous allons dire, are we going to say, um, and you add an I? No, this is not English. Okay? We cannot say this. So we're going to, to cheat with English. We're going to cheat. Instead of saying am, we're going to use are. Okay? And we add this, aren't I? Okay, whenever it is, I am. Alors, c'est un piège dans lequel on tombe souvent. Sachant que c'est I am et que cette phrase est à la forme affirmative, on est souvent tenté de croire que on va dire, um, I, this is. Vous voyez que c'est même difficile à dire. Ça ne se dit pas. Alors, on viole un peu la loi de la grammaire. Au lieu de dire « am », on utilise « are » qui normalement s'utilise pour « you »,« we »,« they okay? ».« I am your only chance »,« aren't I »,« je suis votre seule chance », n'est-ce pas So we've finished for today, and uh, see you next time for the next class. Goodbye.